Mom and Dad broke up a few years ago and even with child support my family doesn't have much money. That all changed recently when Mom won the lottery. We now had more money than we ever dreamt of and our lives were about to change. I was just a normal boy doing what boys do, not paying attention to my mom or teachers, and being a pain in the butt to my older sister Barbara and her friends. One of my favorite things to do was to sneak up on Barb and flip her dress up in the back. I thought this was the most fun you could possibly have next to looking up Barb's dress. Of course Barb hated it but since dad left mom really hasn't been able to control me very well. She tried her best but the complaints from neighbors and teachers just kept pouring in. One day mom announced that at the end of the school year we were moving to another tea town. She told me that it would give me a fresh start and that she was sure I'd settle down and behave. I've looked at some pictures of our new house and I can't believe it. Instead of a small apartment we would have a nice big home with a huge yard. I'm going to have my own rooms complete with walk-in closets that are almost as big as my old room. Barb is thrilled, she says she'll finally have a big enough closet for all of her outfits while I could fit everything I own in one with plenty of space left over. Mom said not to worry, soon I'd need the room for all of the new clothes I'll have. I hadn't been to the house yet but from what I could hear mom talking about that she's hired people to paint and move new furniture to prepare for our moving in a few months. Mom told me that things would be different for us in the new house but she won't say how. I've tried to ask Barb about it but she just told me that I'd see soon enough. I'm a little bit worried, I've caught Barb staring at me and smiling. I don't trust her and I'm sure she's up to something. It's the day of the big move, school's been out for two weeks and I've said goodbye to all of my friends. We're not taking much with us, there'll be all new furniture in the house and mom and Barb have been shopping a lot lately to get clothes for my new closets. I don't mind getting new stuff, my family's had to make do on very little for so long that my clothes aren't anything to brag about anyway. Mom, Barb, and I spent the last few hours making sure everything was taken care of in the old house before we drove over to the new one. I rushed into the house anxious to see how it looked with everything in place but before I could look around mom stopped me saying that she wanted to show me my new rooms Barb insisted on tagging along saying that she couldn't wait for me to see my new room. When mom opened the door to my room I could have died. I had a canopy bed with ruffled pink sheets, a pink rug, and cream-colored walls. My dresser had a set of heated curlers and all kinds of makeup on it. There was a showcase in the corner filled with the type of fancy dolls that girls collect and a poster of the latest rock group that the girls in school went nuts over. Mom opened the doors to my walk-in closet to reveal that I had a closet full of clothes that looked like stuff Barb would wear. There wasn't a t-shirt or pair of shorts to be found, nothing but dresses, skirts, and blouses. Barb had a big grin on her face. I hope you like your new room and clothes, I helped mom decorate and she let me pick out all of your new clothes. Mom. I screamed. What kind of a stupid joke is this anyhow? There's no joke. Mom said coolly. I take it you don't like your room? There's no way I'm sleeping in that room and I'll never wear those clothes. I said adamantly. Then you'll have to find somewhere else to live, mom replied. If you live here you'll sleep in that room and you will wear those clothes. But mom, those are girls' things, I can't dress up like a girl, everyone will think I'm weird. Trust me, no one will think you're weird. They'll just think you're a pretty girl, that's all. Isn't this great? Barb asked sarcastically. You've been trying to see what's under my dresses for so long and now you'll finally know, because now you'll be wearing dresses too. Mom explained that she was at wit's end trying to make me behave, nothing she tried seemed to work. She had gotten this idea from her mother who knew of a boy it had been done to. It seemed like such an extreme thing to do but after my grandmother reminded her of all the trouble I had caused she decided it had to be done. Since I couldn't enjoy the freedom I had as a boy without causing a great deal of trouble perhaps the limitations of being a girl would settle me down. Today would be the last day of my life as Kevin Roth, from now on I would be Melissa and Roth. No longer would I be able to run off to play baseball while Barb cleaned the house, I would pitch in and help with what I had always called girls' work. I wouldn't be jumping out of trees and scaring people anymore. Girls didn't do that sort of thing and besides, it wouldn't be easy climbing trees in a dress and stockings. 
I wouldn't be flipping Barb's dresses up anymore either since I wouldn't want some boy to do that to me. I was then told to go to my rooms and change into something pretty after which I would have more explained to me. Mom smiled at me and said, Come on Missy, I'll show you how to put things on, I want you to look especially pretty. I was too upset to put up a fight and soon I was in my room standing in front of mom in just a pair of panties. Mom went through my closet picking out the rest of the things I would need to become Missy. Before long I had on a padded bra, a pair of tan pantyhose, a lace trim slip, and a dress that zipped up the back. The dress was a sort of cream color with a full skirt and sleeves made entirely of lace, I never felt so scared as when she zipped it up and hooked the clasp at the top. It all seemed so final. Mom helped me put on a pair of white shoes with a low heel then buckled the strap across my ankle. After a little work with a brush and headband I ended up with a girl's hairstyle. Well, what do you think? She asked. Do you like the way your new clothes feel? No I don't, I hate them. I cried. I'm a boy, I don't want to wear dresses and girls underwear. Sorry Melissa, she said. But there isn't any other way. Believe me, you'll really enjoy being a pretty girl once you get used to it. What was left for me to do? I couldn't run away, yet if I stayed I had to be a girl. I knew I had to stay but I couldn't stop worrying about what was planned for me. Barb was waiting for us when we went back to the living room. She was smiling and looking at me from all angles. You're really cute Missy. I can't believe how pretty you look in your new clothes. Mom asked me to sit down and as I did she showed me how to smooth my skirt, put my legs together, and my fold my hands in my lap. I felt silly acting like a girl but I did as I was told anyhow. Mom explained that I would be expected to dress, act, and behave the way girls my age would from now on. All of my boys' clothes had been given away as well as any toys that were not appropriate for a girl. From now on there would be no more toy guns or things of that sort. Instead it would be baby dolls, jump ropes, tea sets, dresser dolls and the like for me. I would have the best that money could buy, bicycles, cable television in my room, the works. Mom would spare no expense to make me feel loved and wanted, it was just that I would be loved and wanted as her daughter from now on. She went on to explain that in two weeks I would be sent off to summer camp for a period of three weeks. This camp would be a little different from other camps though, at this camp they taught boys how to be girls. If I paid attention and worked hard no would ever be able to tell that I hadn't been born female. After summer was over I would return to a private school nearby as Melissa. Everything had been arranged with the school where I would be treated the same as any other girls my age. Just what I always wanted. I thought to myself. I'd be going back to school as a girl. My mom was nuts. As mom talked though I knew she was serious, I certainly couldn't run away, there was nowhere to go. If I stayed I could have everything I ever hoped for, or should I say that Barb could ever hope for. I thought that it would be best to just wait things out, mom would stop this crap eventually. I told mom that I would go along with her which brought a smile to her face. She knew she had me trapped but it was still nice of her to act like it was my choice. Barb then took me back to my room and began to explain my new clothes, what they were for, and how to wear them. Of course the first thing I noticed was that there was going to be a big difference my old clothes and my new ones. My underwear, formerly white, now came in every color in the rainbow. If that wasn't bad enough there was lace everywhere. I had lace on my panties, and of course my slips were all trimmed in lace. I was considered old enough to wear training bras which were also generously trimmed in lace. Barb laughed at me when I held up one of my training bras. Don't worry little sister, she said. You'll fill them out soon enough. I wasn't sure if she was teasing me or not but I was too afraid to find out. The next couple of weeks were rough, I had to be dressed as a girl every day which meant a dress during the day, and frilly baby doll PJs with matching ruffled panties at night. Mom said it was kind of a crash course in girl. Of course along with my dresses I wore all of the appropriate underwear which included bras, girdles, slips, and pantyhose. I managed to ruin several pairs of stockings before I finally got used to putting them on but mom just smiled and bought me more. She told me it was normal for girls to ruin several pairs of stockings before they got the hang of it and that I was no different than other girls my age. 
Probably the hardest thing to get used to was having Barb teach me how to walk, sit, and stand while wearing a dress. She was thrilled to finally get revenge on me for the problems I caused. Mom had contacted a lawyer who specialized in this sort of thing and had my birth certificate changed to show that I had been born a female named Melissa and Roth. I felt trapped. There just didn't seem to be any way out of this. Mom and Barb were certainly getting their wish to have me behave. Every day I had to do housework and dishes just like Mom and Barb had done before. I wasn't about to sneak out to play in dresses so I stayed home and learned how to be feminine. Barb's teasing soon stopped and was replaced with a friendlier attitude towards her little sister. She was very helpful in teaching me how to dress and act and even promised to help me set my hair once it was long enough. What a treat! Just learning to do housework was tough enough since I'd never had to before but learning to do it in a dress and stockings was a whole different problem. Mom and Barb were constantly reminding me to be careful of how I stood or reached for something so that my slip wouldn't show and I had to be very careful to keep from getting a run in my stockings and having to change. Of course there was the problem of going to the bathroom and having to arrange my dress and underwear when I finished. I couldn't believe how much trouble girls had to go through for the simplest things. I really missed just pulling down my zipper and relieving myself. Now I had to hold up my skirt and slip with one hand while using the other to pull down my pantyhose and panties. Before long though it was time to go to my summer camp. For the first time in two weeks I was allowed to wear shorts instead of dresses, I chose a pair of pink ones with ruffles around the leg, a sleeveless white top, pink ankle socks, and white sneakers. I suppose the last couple of weeks had made a real impression on me because I found myself sitting and standing as if I was still wearing a dress. Barb smiled and told me that I was really doing well and that she was so proud of her new sister. I'm sure she meant it as a compliment but I still didn't like the idea of being a girl for the rest of my life. Mom drove me to the camp and helped carry my luggage into the dorms. The rooms in the dorms were every bit as frilly as my room at home, all done up in pastel colors with lace curtains, twin beds, and matching vanities since for the next three weeks I would share a room with another girl my own age after mom put my stuff away she wished me luck, kissed me and left. I looked in my closet and found that in addition to my usual skirts and dresses there was now a white tennis dress, a matching pair of panties with rows of lace along the back and several pairs of heels. While looking for other surprises they may have left for me I found two bathing suits, one purple and one sky blue suit. I couldn't imagine wearing either one but somehow I knew that it wouldn't be long before I was standing alongside the pool I saw on the way and wearing a girl's bathing suit. My roommate arrived a little while later and introduced herself as Ken. I must have looked stupid standing there staring but I was sure this was a girl. Ken kept telling me that he was really a boy like me but I couldn't believe it. My roommate was wearing a pair of cut-off jeans and a top that was pulled up and tied just below her bra line. She had shoulder-length blonde hair tied back in a ponytail that swayed as she walked. This was a girl any guy I knew would have stared at for days and now she was my roommate. Ken's mom guaranteed that he was as much a boy as I was but liked to dress up like a girl. His mom had decided to send him to this camp to smooth out any rough spots in her daughter. Rough spots. From where I was standing there was nothing rough about Ken. He was all girl, nothing but curves, sugar, spice, and everything nice. Ken's mom suggested that perhaps he would leave and I could help her unpack so that we could get to know each other better. Ken agreed, gave her mom a goodbye kiss and we started to put his clothes away. All the while we were putting her things away Ken kept talking about how happy he was to be here and how great it would be. He seemed amazed when I told him that I didn't want to be at the camp and certainly didn't want to be wearing girls' clothes and learning how to act like a girl. He smiled and said that he was sure that once I had gotten used to it I'd love wearing pretty clothes, getting my hair fixed, and being a girl. Ken's mom had dressed him as a girl last Halloween and Ken had loved every second of it. People mistook him for a real girl and he had so much fun that he begged her mom to let him dress up whenever he could. When he heard about this camp and a chance to live as a girl for three whole weeks he pestered his mother until she agreed to let him come. He couldn't wait to learn as much as he could about being a girl and he promised to show me how much fun it could be. His enthusiasm was catchy and before long he had me agreeing that it just might not be as bad as I thought. Soon a woman came to our room and introduced herself as one of the counselors at the camp. 
She welcomed Ken and me to the camp and said that she was sure we'd de enjoy our stay. She gave us a copy of the camp schedule along with a map of the camp and said that we'd be expected to meet her in another building in half an hour for a more thorough explanation of what we would be doing in the camp. As she left she added almost as an afterthought that we were expected to wear a dress or skirt for the meeting. Ken switched into high gear and soon I found myself dashing about with him trying to decide on what we should wear. Ken chose a mint green, sleeveless top with an pleated white skirt to wear while I chose a peach-colored blouse and a yellow peasant-style skirt for me. Ken had me so wound up that I had my blouse, stockings, and slip-on before I realized what I was doing. I thought about it for a moment and figured that I didn't have any choice so I pulled on my skirt, tucked my blouse into it and stepped into a pair of white flats. Ken never hesitated, he got out of her shorts and top and began putting on stockings as if he'd been doing this for his whole life. Once he finished dressing he looked even cuter than before. I wondered if I looked as good as he did and then wondered why I'd care. We got to the room where the meeting was and joined a group of about 50 other kids. It was easy to see that some of these kids were boys but it looked as though there were a number of girls there too. We were all dressed in a similar fashion, nothing but skirts and dresses. Once we were all seated the head counselor began to explain what was going to happen to us the next three weeks. The first thing she asked us to do was to look around at the other kids in the room. She said that regardless of what we looked like we were actually all boys then she said that that would change by the end of three weeks. She said that some of us had wanted to come here and some of us may have been forced to come here. It didn't matter though because our parents had decided we should be girls and when we were done we would think, look, talk, and act just like any other girl our age. We could fight it and refuse to learn we were told, that was entirely up to us. However since we would certainly be spending time dressed as girls it would be best for us to be convincing. It was our choice, we could be called sissies, be laughed at and picked on, or we could be young ladies. I hadn't thought of things that way before but as much as I hated looking like this I sure didn't want anyone to know that I was a boy. We would be split into groups based on our ages and each group would be taught the proper behavior for girls that age. We would spend several hours a day in class then would have free time to relax and enjoy ourselves later. We would be expected to wear dresses for class time but after that we could dress as we wished, provided we wore girls clothing at all times. We were then separated into two age groups and sent to different areas to begin our classes. My group, the 12 to 14 year olds, would learn things like poise, beginning makeup, hair care, and fashion. The older group of girls, 15 to 18 years old, would learn similar skills but on a slightly more advanced level since girls their age would be expected to use more makeup, wear different clothes and date. I was glad I didn't have to take those classes since I was sure that I wouldn't need those skills. Actually I had figured that if I didn't cause too much trouble I could get mom to forget this crap soon after I got home. Class began with the instructor addressing as ladies and explaining that first of all some changes would be made to help our appearance. It turns out that our parents had made some choices for us before we came and now we were going to have a few things changed. We would all be getting our hair done in ways to make us look as pretty as possible then some of us would be getting our ears pierced. I cringed at the idea of having my hair done, I had let it grow long to defy mom who wanted it short. Now it looks as though mom will have the last laugh, the teacher said that with my long hair they'd be able to make me look really cute. Moments later I was escorted to another room to have my hair washed and styled. The lady doing my hair rubbed some really gross smelling stuff on it after washing and trimming it then began to roll it up in curlers. I had a terrible feeling in my stomach when I realized what that smell in curlers meant I was getting a perm just like mom and barb. While they were setting my hair they filed my nails, shaped them and put several coats of pink polish on them. After my nails were completely done I was seated under a dryer and given a pamphlet on menstruation to read. I was horror stricken until I was told that it was something girls my age talked about and I would need to know about it. Talk about a scare, for a minute I wondered just how far they planned on going with this stupid stuff. When my hair was completely dry my curlers we removed and after a little brushing and fluffing I was allowed to look in a mirror. Thanks to my defying mom I now looked like a cute girl with long curly hair. When I went back to the classroom Ken greeted me with his usual enthusiasm, gushing about how cute I looked and how lucky I was to have such long, thick hair. 
His hair was much shorter than mine and had been cut into a style that even though it was as short as a boy's it left no doubt that Ken was a girl. When everyone was done we were given a lecture about menstruation and how girls talked about it. I learned more than I ever cared to know about cramps, pads, tampons and all the other fun parts of a girl's period. We would have to spend a few days on this and then we'd have to give a short talk about our periods, when we first started having them, and whether we used pads or tampons. In the meantime we would begin learning how to talk like girls. Our teacher told us over and over that talking like a girl was going to be an important part of our training. This would really make a big difference in our being accepted as girls. We were taught to use more words like cute, sweet, adorable, and pretty. Instead of a black and white cat, we were taught to say an adorable little black cat with cute white paws. We learned to use more descriptive phrases in our conversations. We couldn't say that something looked good, we had to say why we thought it looked good and most importantly to describe what made us feel that it was good. By the end of the class we were getting frustrated trying to think of new ways to describe ordinary things but the teacher told us that by the time we were done we probably wouldn't be able to think differently. Our next bit of training was in poise. We actually had to balance a book on our heads as we walked. I thought this happened only in old movies but the teacher insisted that it would help us learn to walk more like girls. There were a few guys who were able to walk and balance the first time but most of us never got it right and were told to practice in our rooms. We were taught how to take short, sort of gliding steps which would put the necessary wiggle to our walk I had a tough time on this part and the teacher had to keep telling me to slow down and take smaller steps. After about an hour I seemed to be getting the hang of it much to my teacher's delight and my relief. I had no idea being a girl was anywhere near this hard. The first day of training seemed to go on forever with the teachers correcting us on any unladylike behavior they observed. Every time we sat down we were reminded to smooth out our skirts, cross our legs, keep our legs close together, and sit up straight like proper young ladies. Our teachers never raised their voices, they very calm and nice to us complimenting us whenever we did something correctly. They had the right idea because before long I found that I actually wanted to please them with my girlish behavior. It was mid-afternoon and the day's training was just about to end when her teacher told us that there was one more thing to do before dismissal. She picked up a large box from the floor, set it on her desk and told us that when she called our name we would come and get what she had in the box. We did as we were told and each of us received what appeared to be a pair of nude colored panties that seemed kind of small. After we had all gotten our new panties we were told that they were called sex cashing panties and that when worn properly they would conceal our male genitals. We were instructed on how to put them on and told that we would be required to wear them any time we wore any type of slacks, shorts or bathing suits. Tight panty girdles would serve the same purpose under our dresses and skirts but these had to be worn any other time. We were then dismissed and told to enjoy the rest of the day but to make sure we studied in preparation for the next day's classes. On the way back to our room Ken convinced me to go swimming with him. I didn't want to at first since I'd have to wear a girl's bathing suit but he reminded me that everyone there would be a boy in a girl's bathing suit. I still felt silly but it was awfully hot so I finally gave in. Back at our room we took off our dresses and lingerie then slipped into our cashing panties and bathing suits. Not wanting to be too daring I decided to wear the blue, one-piece suit that mom had given me. It had taken me a little while to get myself tucked into the cashing panties but when I pulled on the suit and adjusted it I found that my teacher had been right. I looked just like my sister did in her bathing suits. For the next several minutes Ken and I just stood there staring at each other, neither of us wanting to be the first to say anything. Finally Ken spoke up. You look great Kevin, just like a girl. So do you, Ken? I replied. I hate to admit it, but we look just like a couple of girls. We couldn't seem to take our eyes off of each other's crotch and soon began to break out in laughter. Ken threw his arms around me and we stood there hugging and giggling like two girls sharing a special moment. I finally broke the spell. I think that all things considered you should call me Melissa, or better yet Missy. Ken smiled at me. I think you're right, Missy. Please call me Kelly. We hugged and laughed some more before heading down to the pool. At the pool I still felt a little silly but we recognized some of the other girls from our class and soon we were having a ball talking about class, clothes and of course, how we came to be there. 
I found several other girls whose parents had for one reason or another decided to make girls of them some had been dressing since they were little and had grown accustomed to being girls while others like myself were still having trouble getting used to our new sex. We laid there tanning and talking for hours talking about growing up as girls one girl, Jamie, told of how her mother had always wanted a daughter and had bought nothing but girls clothes when she was pregnant. When Jamie was born her mom was determined not to let nature stand in the way of her happiness and with her husband's blessing raised Jamie as a girl. Jamie was finally told of her true sex when she was eight years old but by then it was too late to change. She'd been a girl all of her life and that's how her relatives treated her. She had a closet full of frilly party dresses, play outfits, and school dresses since she had gone to nursery school, kindergarten, and first grade as a girl. Linda was like I had been, hard to get along with, always getting into trouble. Her dad's mother had been the one to suggest that she be turned into a girl as a way to calm her down. Susan was ten years old when she found out that her dad cross-dressed. She was fascinated by her dad's ability to become a pretty woman and asked if she could try dressing up too. Her parents were only too happy to agree and soon began buying her pretty clothes for her birthday and Christmas. Girl camp had been a twelfth birthday gift from her parents. Later on, back in my room, it seemed strange that these boys were able to accept life as a girl so easily. I knew I'd never give in, I'd go along until mom changed her mind. I was sure she would, she just had to. After a shower I put on my baby doll PJs just like I had for the past couple of weeks and went to bed. It had been an odd day of class and I was sort of afraid to think of what the next three weeks would be like. Could they really make me as comfortable as the girls at the pool? If I was able to fool everyone into thinking I really was a girl would I end up fooling myself too? Was it possible for me to accidentally turn myself into the sweet, well-behaved, daughter mom wanted me to be? Needless to say it was tough going to sleep. The next morning I choose a floral pattern sundress to wear to class. The dress had spaghetti straps so I had to wear a strapless bra and a half slip with it. I couldn't seem to fix my hair quite the way it had been the day before so I just pulled it back into a ponytail and left it like that. Kelly decided to wear a denim dress that she looked terrific in. If I didn't know that my roommate was another boy I would have sworn I was looking at a really good looking girl. Her dress seemed to fit and show off curves that boys didn't have. She thanked me when I mentioned it to her saying that it was one of her favorite dresses and complimenting me on my outfit. Why was it so easy to appreciate compliments like this when I was around her? She just had a way of making me feel as if I should enjoy being a girl. Class that day was devoted first to more sitting, standing, and walking as a girl. I seemed to be getting better at it once I relaxed and remembered all that mom and Barb had taught me. We gave our little speeches on our periods and had to stand there and submit to questions by the teacher and other girls. I was glad to finally be allowed to sit down again, certain that talking to a real girl had to be easier than this. Later that day I was once again called out of the class and taken back to the beauty shop. I couldn't figure out why since they had just given me a perm the day before. Once in the shop I was asked to sit down in a chair away from the styling area. I was then told that mom had requested that I have my ears pierced for earrings. Lucky me to have such a thoughtful mother. Before I got them pierced I had to listen to another lecture and demonstration on taking care of pierced ears and earrings. Finally the lady held an instrument to one ear then the other. A slight pop, an instant of pain, and I had two gold ball earrings stuck to my ears. I knew a couple of guys in school who wore an earring and had considered asking mom to let me get one too but I never intended to wear two of them. Of course back in class Kelly made her usual fuss over my new earrings, telling me how lucky I was to be able to have pierced ears. Since she wasn't going to be a girl all of the time her mom wouldn't let her get her ears pierced. I told her that I'd happily trade but she insisted that I'd hate to have to wear clip-ons, pierced earrings were so much better. The only thing that made having my ears pierced bearable was when I was told that if I didn't keep wearing them the holes would eventually close up. Maybe I could just forget them for a little while at home and then I wouldn't have to worry about pierced ears when I went back to being a boy again. Every day that went by we learned a little bit more of the finer points of being girls, sitting, standing, walking, and talking skills were all thoroughly reinforced until we did them without thinking. We were referred to as young ladies, or girls when in a group, miss if alone. 
Our boys' names were never used nor was there any mention that we were boys trying to act like girls. We were treated as if we were young girls taking a charm school class to help develop and hone our femininity. We were taught basic makeup skills in the first few days and from then on my group was expected to wear simple makeup, lipstick and blush with just a touch of eyeshadow, to class every day. I had to get up a half hour earlier from then on to make sure that my hair was set with the electric curlers mom gave me and to fix my makeup. The teachers did such a good job of treating us as girls that by the end of the first week we responded automatically to our names and they had to correct our manners much less than before. Our training program was very intense. Even outside of class we were immediately corrected if any unladylike behavior was observed. We attended class in dresses with complete lingerie under them and during our free time we wore girls' casual clothes with our cash and panties if needed anything we did, we did as girls or we just didn't do it. I used to like playing tennis and was fairly good at it but found it very distracting to play in a short dress and ruffle panties. There was no place to play or equipment to use for baseball, basketball, or football, so instead we learned how to jump rope and play hopscotch. The older girls spent most of their free time at the pool but my friends and I actually found girls' games to be fun. The competition wasn't nearly as fierce as it was in boys' games so we were able to relax and enjoy ourselves more. My last week at girl camp was now over and I said a tearful goodbye to my new best friend Kelly. We promised to write faithfully as our moms walked us to their cars with tears still rolling down our cheeks. As we drove home I finalized a plan to get me out of dresses. Since mom had decided this was a punishment for me I would use the reverse psychology trick of pretending to enjoy being a girl. Once she saw that her punishment wasn't working she'd give up and put things back the way they were. When mom asked me if I enjoyed the camp I told her that it was the most fun I'd ever had and kept thanking her for sending me. She looked a little confused and said she thought perhaps I might not have liked it so I thanked her again. She upped the stakes by telling me how pretty I looked in my denim skirt and asked me if I liked getting my ears pierced. I thanked her for the compliment on my skirt and said that I was thrilled to have pierced ears and was looking forward to buying myself some pretty earrings. When we got home Barb made a big deal over how much I'd changed in the last three weeks, saying that I seemed more like a girl than ever before. That didn't seem too awfully hard considering that I'd never been a girl and still wasn't but I gave her a sweet smile and told her that she'd better be careful about bringing guys around or I'd steal them from her. I could tell that that got to her cause of the look she gave mom. Mom laughed and told Barb that I was just teasing her again. Barb looked at me in a funny way and said that considering how nice I looked she'd make sure she was careful. I smiled tossed my hair and took my stuff to my room leaving a confused mother and sister behind me. It certainly looked as though my plan was working, I'd be getting a haircut and boys' clothes any day now. I put away all of the clothes I had worn to camp then went back to Barb and Mom to continue my plan. They were sitting in the room watching a movie when I walked in with a little swing to my butt, smoothed my skirt, sat down and crossed my legs the way I had been taught in camp. The look on Barb's face was a riot, she looked totally confused. Are you sure that's my little brother, Mom? He's become quite a young lady, Barb. Said Mom, you might want to take some lessons from him. Just what every girl dreams of, Barb sighed. Having her little brother give her lessons on being a lady. I'd be happy to help Barb, I said sweetly. After all, it would be the least I could do to show my appreciation. Appreciation for what? For making me into a girl of course, dummy. Wait just a minute, you mean you don't mind what we did to you? You can't possibly tell me that you like wearing dresses and girls' underwear. To tell you the truth Barb, I really elf hated it at first but now that I've gotten used to it I kinda like wearing girls' stuff. The clothes are so soft and my new underwear feels so nice I sort of wish I had been born a girl instead of a boy. I wanted to keep driving Barb nuts, but Mom interrupted to say that we were going shopping in a movie and wanted to help me pick out something pretty to wear. I told her it sounded like fun but I wanted to pick out my own outfit. I knew by the look on her face that she wasn't sure what was going on and I wanted to keep it that way. I hurried up to my room and began going through my closet to find something that would be just perfect. It had to be something really pretty to convince them that I was serious about being a girl and after a few minutes I found exactly what I wanted. 
I picked out a white gauze skirt that came halfway between my knees and ankles and a pink gauze top. It was the perfect outfit, nice and cool for a hot summer day and feminine enough to drive mom and Barb nuts. After a couple of minutes searching I found everything else I'd need to complete the outfit, a long, white half-slip and camisole, tan stockings, and a pair of pink sandals. After I finished dressing I brushed my hair back into a ponytail, tied it back with a white lace scarf Barb had thoughtfully provided then added a little pink blush and lip gloss. Barb's eyes nearly popped out of her head when she saw me. I did a quick twirl and asked how I looked. Barb told me she thought I was gorgeous and mom stood there beaming with pride at her new daughter. She may like it now, I thought to myself but I'd change moms quickly enough. Pretty soon she'd be begging me to go back to being Kevin. I'd have the last laugh then. Our first stop at the mall was a nationally known women's clothing store that catered to the well-to-do. I knew that mom and Barb were waiting to see what I'd do so I made certain that they weren't disappointed. I started looking through the racks of clothes just like the other girls in the store, pulling out different outfits and holding them against me as I looked in a mirror. I picked several different outfits to try on and asked Barb where the dressing room was. She pointed to a corner of the store but before letting me go she said that she had an outfit she wanted to have me try on. I gulped hard when I saw what she was holding. It was a rose-colored, satiny fabric gown with short puffy sleeves. You might be able to pull your little act over on mom. She whispered. But I'm not buying it, I'm betting you're still too much of a boy to wear this. She had me trapped and she knew it, if I refused to try on the gown she'd tell mom that I was lying and I'd never get out of skirts. I grabbed the gown from her hands and started for the dressing rooms. I took off my skirt and top and reached for the gown Barb had chosen. I hurriedly unzipped it, stepped into it and pulled it up to my shoulders. I zipped it as far as I could then turn to see myself in the dressing room mirror. The dress seemed to fit me pretty well but of course my ear sister would have made sure of that. The only adjustment I had to make was to roll up the waistband of my slip to keep it from showing beneath the gown. Barb was outside calling for me to come out so I took a deep breath and stepped out of the dressing room. Would you mind zipping me up Barb? I couldn't get the zipper any higher. Barb smiled and said she'd be more than happy to help as she zipped the gown all the way up and fastened the small hook at the top. Mom, come see how pretty Missy looks in this dress. She called out to our mother. Mom came over and immediately began making a big fuss over how pretty I looked as I modeled the gown. Barb insisted that I turn every which way to show it off properly and I happily obliged. Isn't it beautiful, Mom? I gushed. I love it. Barb just stood behind Mom giving me dirty looks. She was sure I was putting on an act and she seemed determined to prove it. Since she likes it so much why don't we buy it for her, Mom? Barb suggested. A girl can never have too many pretty outfits, right? You're right, Barb, Mom said. How about we get this blue one for you and then you two can really look like sisters? I don't think we should, Mom, I said. They're very expensive and we'll never really use them. Barb saw her chance and jumped on it. I'd love to have the blue one, Mom, it's gorgeous. It's too expensive, Barb. I said, teeth clenched. Barb smiled at me. Since we're the same size we'd be able to switch dresses, Missy, you could wear the red one to one party and I could wear the blue one. Next time we'd switch dresses, wouldn't that be fun? Tons, I replied. I could see that mom was thrilled with the idea of her daughters in look-alike dresses. I went back into the dressing room, took off what was to be my new dress and finished trying on several other outfits. Somehow the idea of showing mom how much I enjoyed wearing pretty clothes didn't seem so hot. I had to keep Barb from interfering if I was ever going to get mom to change her mind. Each time I thought I would shake mom up Barb turned the tables on me and made mom more and more certain that she should keep me as a girl. Barb really screwed up my plans and I ended up with three more dresses, two short sets, three pairs of culottes, and two rompers. She was just so helpful in picking outfits for me to try on, always coming up with something very girlish and frilly. She had me try on a silky mini dress with matching panties that mom thought I looked so cute in and a pair of white shorts with a pink, ruffled, tube top and a gauze shirt that was meant to be left open enough to show off my top. 
Barb was also nice enough to point out that I would need several more strapless bras to go with my outfits and mom was only too happy to buy more for me. I made a mental note to thank my dear sister as soon as I could. Mom let me pick out several pairs of girls' jeans to wear saying that I would no longer have to wear dresses all of the time. I was happy to hear that but when mom left Barb gleefully informed me that just in case I had any other ideas she had no plans on giving up her new sister. With a wicked smile on her face she told me that even though I could now wear jeans I d still look like a cute girl. She felt that it was the least she could do to help her little sister become a young woman. Over the next couple of weeks my sister remained faithful to her promise of making a girl out of me. I wore jeans as often as I could but I had to wear a girdle under them that shaped my butt and held my genitals in making me look like other girls. My jeans were a small but important means of my remaining a boy and like I said I wore them whenever I could but Barb kept after me and soon convinced me to give up my jeans because of the summer heat. I compromised and began wearing shorts and tops but Barb often suggested we go places where shorts weren't appropriate and before long I was also wearing sundresses and cotton skirts with bare legs. Barb wasn't satisfied with my wearing sundresses and summer skirts and began to pressure me to go to the local pool with her. I refused time and time again but she was persistent and soon enlisted mom's help. I would have loved to go to the pool since it was close to 90 degrees every day but mom and my sister wouldn't let me go as a boy and I wouldn't go as a girl. Finally, after the third straight day above 95 I gave in. I just couldn't stand it anymore, even in my shorts and gauze tops I was a ball of sweat. I knew I'd regret it but I went to my room, put on my special panties and slipped on the bathing suit I had worn at camp. I looked just like any other 12-year-old girl as I walked to the pool with mom and Barb but I cringed any time we passed other people, certain that I'd be recognized as a boy. I didn't consider this to be giving in to being a girl, it was just the only practical thing to do. Besides, maybe if mom saw me in a girl's bathing suit she'd have second thoughts. To be honest though, I was feeling so hot that I would have agreed to a bikini just to get to the pool. We made it to the pool without anyone looking at me twice, that is if you don't count several boys we passed who made a special point of checking out Barb and me. I was a little embarrassed to have other boys staring at me but grateful that they thought I really was a girl. Once we got to the pool mom made me spread my towel up neatly and unpack my sunglasses and suntan lotion from my beach bag. Once I got everything unpacked I had to rub lotion on my arms, legs and chest then sit still while mom rubbed lotion on my back. Mom insisted that I wait a few minutes for the lotion to dry before swimming which meant I had to listen to her comments on the bathing suits other girls were wearing and how nice I'd look in them. The lotion finally dried and I quickly dived into the pool, grateful for the cool water. I dived under several times and swam from side to side before getting out for a break. As I sat on the edge of the pool I noticed several boys kept coming past and diving in near to where I sat. When I jumped in for another dip they splashed and carried on so much that I got out and went back to where mom and Barb were tanning themselves. What's wrong Missy? Barb asked curiously. I thought you couldn't wait to get to the pool. I couldn't, I replied. It's just that those boys keep horsing around where I want to swim. Mom and Barb exchanged knowing looks and smiles. Okay, I give up. What's up? You really don't understand do you? Barb asked in amazement. I understand that I feel silly sitting here in a girl's bathing suit and I can't swim because of those stupid boys. I said icily. What wonderful girl's secret am I missing now? Calm down Melissa, mom said calmly. She's only trying to help you. Spare me, please. The last time she helped me I ended up with a girl's bedroom and a closet filled of dresses. That's what I'm trying to tell you silly. Barb giggled. Those boys obviously think you're cute. You've got to be kidding. Are they nuts or something? No dear, mom said. That's the way young boys act around good-looking girls. I suggest you get used to it, you'll be seeing it a lot. Just my luck, stuck in girls' clothes and now I've got a couple of boys thinking I'm cute. Worse yet, mom doesn't see anything wrong with it. I must be stuck in the twilight zone or something. Come on Missy, Barb said taking my hand. I'll take you away from those mean old boys. I pulled my hand back, this was the chance I'd been waiting for. Never mind sis, I'll be okay. I smiled, 
tossed my hair over my shoulder and set off towards the boys doing my best to walk just like I had been taught in camp. So mom wanted a daughter, I'd give her a daughter to remember. I'd be back in boys' clothes before the afternoon was over. I casually walked over to where I had been sitting and jumped into the pool. It didn't take long, before I finished a quick lap the boys were back. They jumped across me to get into the pool, accidentally splashed me, and generally made a pain of themselves. As soon as one worked up enough guts to look up at me I flashed him a smile and said hi. Before he could reply a girl's voice from behind told him to get lost. I turned around to see a girl about my age glaring at the boys in the pool. She sat down and introduced herself as Jill, the sister of the boy I had smiled at. She said that if he was bothering me she'd tell her mom and he'd get into a lot of trouble. I said that they weren't really being much trouble, that they were just being boys. I guess you're right, said Jill. I just wish they wouldn't act so strange all of the time. That's what makes them different from us, I said thinking back several months to when I had been different. I kinda like the difference actually. We sat and talked for a few minutes before her brother Tim got up the courage to come out of the pool. He sat next to Jill but kept staring at me. I was a little uncomfortable at first, I mean every time I looked his way he was staring at me with a dopey look on his face. After a while though I found that all I had to do was smile at him and he would blush and look away. I knew Mom and Barb were watching so I continued the little game with Tim. He'd stare at me until I smiled at him then he'd act like he was looking at something behind me. After maybe ten minutes he gave up and went back into the pool. I sort of hated to see him leave, it had been a fun game while it lasted and in a way I enjoyed the attention. It's not that I wanted to have a boy interested in me or anything stupid like that, it was like they said in camp, better to be considered a girl than a sissy. Tim and his friends could have caused me all sorts of trouble if they thought I was a boy so I did my best to be a girl for them and it obviously worked. I was still too young for dating and girls wanted nothing to do with Kevin so it was a new experience to see the effect girls could have on a boy. I wondered what would have happened if I had sat near Tim or something like that. What the heck, if I have to be a girl for a little while longer I figured I'd check out this mysterious power girls have. I went back to where mom and Barb lay tanning themselves and sat down. Mom looked up at me and smiled. It's nice to see you making friends Missy. Her name's Jill, I said absent-mindedly. She seems pretty nice. Who was the boy you kept flirting with little sister? Asked Barb with a devilish grin. Oh, that was Tim, Jill's brother. I replied trying to upset. But I wasn't flirting with him. Mom laughed and gave me her old let-me-tell-you-something smile. Maybe you didn't consider it flirting, but you certainly had that young man's undivided attention. I don't know mom, Barb continued. I think Missy here knew very well what she was doing to that boy. Are you jealous, Barb? I teased. Maybe you're worried that I'm better looking than you? Well, if you're all that confident about your looks I've got a dare for you, Barb replied. How about wearing one of my two-piece suits back here tomorrow? Of course, if you're not sure. I'd love to Barb. I exclaimed trying my best to hide my fear. Hopefully mom would feel that we were getting a little too carried away and decide to call the whole thing off. Great! You can try on a couple as soon as we get home, I'm sure we can find an old one of mine that looks good on you. I have an even better idea girls. Interrupted mom. After dinner we'll go to the mall and get Melissa some of her own. There's no reason she needs to borrow an old one when she could have some pretty new ones of her own. Great idea mom. I said trying to keep her off balance. Do you think I could get a couple of string bikinis while we're there? Mom looked at me and smiled. Not for a couple of more years, sweetie. You're much too young for anything quite so sexy. This wasn't going quite as I had planned. Mom was all too happy with the idea of me flirting with boys and seemed more than willing to help me. I'd just play along until I saw the opening I needed. Of course, this afternoon was supposed to be that opening. At least I wouldn't be getting a string bikini. I went straight to my room when we got home and started to change for the mall while mom made dinner. I decided that since the shock of flirting didn't bother mom I'd go for a little subtle pressure. 
I plugged in my electric curlers, pulled on another pair of cash panties, then a pair of teal blue regular panties with a matching half slip and bra. Sitting on the bed, I pulled on a pair of nude pantyhose, then slid a light blue, cotton dress over my head. The dress was a simple one that mom had bought for me the last time we went to the mall. It was sleeveless with what was called a dropped waistline that extended down to my hips where the skirt started. After making sure my slip and the straps of my bra didn't show I sat down and began to fix my hair. While I waited for my hair to set I started to examine the things on my vanity. I had everything a girl my age could use, lipstick, blush, liquid makeup, eyeshadow, you name and I had it. It seemed a shame to let it go to waste and I thought it might just help with my plan so I did what several months ago I would never have dreamed of doing I started putting on makeup. I remember my lessons from camp and used just a little liquid makeup with some blush and lipstick. I finished with my makeup, took out my curlers and brushed my hair into what I thought was a cute style. I stepped into a pair of blue flats and set off for dinner wondering how my mother and sister would react to the way I looked. Mom's face lit up like a searchlight when she saw how I looked, Barb just sat and stared, speechless for once. You look wonderful, Missy. Mom exclaimed. She right, Missy. Barb said slowly. You really look great. Thanks, I just sort of felt like getting a little done up. Does it look okay for the mall? Certainly, Mom said. That dress looks very nice on you and your hair is perfect. I could do your hair if you want Barb, I offered. This is a bad dream, right? My little brother is offering to fix my hair? But Barb, I said as sweetly as I could. You don't have a little brother, remember? What's wrong with getting some help from another girl, even if I am your sister? Be nice to your sister Barb, Mom said. She's only trying to help. Barb finally relented and promised to let me do her hair after dinner. I'm not sure why, but I was actually happy she agreed. I really wasn't trying to be smart, for the first time in my life I wanted to do something nice for Barb. Dinner was great even if it was only macaroni and cheese with hamburgers. Mom, Barb, and I talked about how much fun we had at the pool and how great it felt to cool off. They teased me a little about Tim but I didn't mind, I never really talked with them much before and the teasing was all in fun. After dinner Barb and I went to her room and after setting her hair I picked out an outfit similar to mine to her to wear. She seemed a little reluctant to undress in front of me but finally gave in and began to get changed. Do I have to wear a dress and stockings? What's wrong with a pair of shorts and a top? Oh come on Barb, you know mom will get a kick out of seeing us both dressed this way. If I can manage a dress and stockings surely you can. Okay, okay. I'll wear them already. But first tell me what you're up to. Why the dress and what's with the hair? Nothing's up Barb, trust me, I just felt like looking nice tonight. I could see by her face that she didn't believe me but I really was telling her the truth. I did really feel like dressing this way and what's really weird is that I liked the way I looked. I intended to show mom that I was going along and hoped she'd lighten up but once I got dressed and did my hair I thought I looked pretty good for a boy. Barb and I talked like two sisters as I did her hair. I found out that my sister really wasn't the monster I had always thought her to be but was actually a nice person once I got to know her. She told me all about the things she liked and didn't like including school and boys. I had always thought she was a real brain and that she enjoyed school but it turns out that she hated to study and the only thing she enjoyed in school were her friends. Now that we were in a new school she wouldn't even have them. For the first time in my life I felt truly sorry for my sister and wanted to help her but I didn't know how well she waited for her hair to set Barb started to change into the outfit I picked for her. I started to turn away but she kept talking as if there was nothing wrong with undressing in front of me. I figured that this was just one more test I have to pass and managed to keep up my end of the conversation. When she finished dressing I took out her curlers and brushed her hair to look like mine. After a quick look in the mirror she turned and threw her arms around me. You're really a dream come true Missy. You've become the cute little sister I always wanted. We're going to have a great time together from now on. Couldn't I just be the sweet little brother you always wanted? I asked hopefully. I promise I'll be good. I'm sorry Missy, it's just not that easy, you promised to be good so many times before. 
Mom has gone through a lot of trouble to set everything up with school and all and I'm not sure it can be changed. There's really no reason to be upset, if I were you I'd relax and have a good time. That's easy for you to say, you're supposed to be a girl. I sobbed. I'm supposed to be a boy but here I am all done up in girl's clothes hoping no one can tell. Barb put her arm around me and held me tight. I understand Missy, she whispered softly. But since you wouldn't behave as a boy you're going to have to be a girl. Trust me little sister, no one's going to notice anything wrong with you, you're a cute girl. I felt better having Barb holding me and talking to me but it didn't change things. I didn't want to be a girl but it just got easier and easier. I never thought about the things I learned at the start, they just seemed to happen automatically. I never thought twice about how I sat, if I was wearing a dress I smoothed out my skirt and pulled it down towards my knees. When I wore slacks I crossed my knees just like any other girl. This afternoon, talking to Jill and Tim I felt so comfortable and relaxed, it was as if I'd always been a girl. The three weeks at camp taught me a lot more than I realized, I was now able to coordinate an outfit as well as any girl, do my hair, put on makeup, and even feel comfortable in a girl's bathing suit. A girl I didn't know treated me as a friend and I had enjoyed flirting with her brother. I knew that the changes had been pretty small and gradual but over the last few months but they were still making me feel more and more like a girl. We finished getting ready and went to the mall to pick out some bathing suits for me. Mom decided she needed a new outfit so Barb and I went off to get what I needed. During the ride here I felt sort of stupid, this whole thing seemed so bizarre, a 12-year-old boy shopping for a girl's bathing suit. After a couple of minutes in the junior's department though I relaxed and started to have a good time. Barb would pick out some truly ugly style or color for me and after making the appropriate looks of disgust I'd do the same for her. One suit she held up was sort of nice, but pretty though it was I just couldn't picture myself in a string bikini. It was a cute shade of pink with a top that would barely cover the nipples I didn't have and the bottom had only a small piece of cloth on the front and a strap for the back. Besides being a bit underdeveloped to wear it I couldn't see how anyone could get used to having that string sticking in there but. I found a pink two-piece suit that seemed to have plenty of material for the top and bottom besides coming with a pink lace-covered jacket. Barb picked out a teal blue suit that had a short skirt attached to the bottoms and a ruffle across the cups on the top. I liked them both so we took them and headed off to find mom. Mom was thrilled with our choices and told me how pretty I'd look in them and how I'd be the center of attention for the boys at the pool. I wasn't really looking forward to having boys looking me over but then again things didn't go so badly with Tim. When we got home Barb and I hurried off to my room so I could model my new bathing suits. I was having so much fun that it didn't occur to me that I shouldn't be dressed this way until I was standing in front of mom. She seemed so pleased with the way I looked though so I forgot my concern and we had a wonderful time with me striking different poses to show off the figure I didn't really have. The next afternoon at the pool I ran into Jill again and she introduced me to some of her girlfriends. I got a lot of compliments on my outfit from the other girls which made feel pretty good. Before as Kevin no one ever seemed to care what I wore and I felt the same about what other guys were wearing. Now though I felt nice to be complimented and found that I was noticing what the other girls wore and telling them how nice they looked. Of course Tim was there with some of his friends and as soon as he saw me with Jill he came over to check me out. I felt strange when I saw Tim coming towards me, it was like I was a bundle of nerves and my heart was pounding. I couldn't believe what I was feeling, I really wanted this boy to notice and approve of me. I knew I shouldn't feel like this but still I liked the feeling. Tim was happy to see me and spent a little time talking to me before he went back into the pool. My new friends and I sat around for a little longer before we decided to go for a swim. After a couple of minutes swimming Tim and his friends suggested we play a little game. Each girl would get on a boy's shoulder and try to knock over the other girls, the last girl still up one. Jill and the others thought it would be fun so we began to pick teams and I ended up with Tim. Some surprise huh? I was having a ball and it seemed like Tim and I would never be beaten when suddenly Jill snuck up and pulled me off Tim. I came out of the water looking and feeling like a drowned rat but happier than I'd ever remembered. Afternoons at the pool had never been this much fun before. Having had enough of nearly being drowned I joined the rest of the girls on the grass to continue working on my tan. 
A good tan seemed to be of major importance to the girls and I was not going to be the exception. Jill helped me put on more lotion and then I laid back to soak up some sun and stares from boys, both of which were plentiful. By the end of summer I had a great tan and several new friends. Jill's friends accepted me as another girl and we spent our time doing things that girls do. We talked about each other, what we liked in clothes, movies, boys and boys. I know I said boys twice but to girls my age boys were really important. I felt silly the first time we started talking about boys, I mean what was I supposed to say about my dream guy? The thought of thinking some other boy was cute or dreamy just didn't make me feel very good at all. Oh sure, I thought Tim was nice but I considered him a friend, not a potential dream guy. No I don't know why I felt nervous and happy whenever he was around, I suppose I just want to make sure he doesn't figure out that I'm not really a girl. Summer was coming to an end and I was still a girl. I didn't mind it too much anymore, after all it had been almost five months since mom first put a dress on me and I guess I got sort of used to it. I'd asked her several times to let me go back to being a boy but she always smiles and tells me not to worry that everything will be okay. I don't know what she means but I wish she'd call this whole thing off before it's too late. I'll be starting school soon and I really don't want to have to go back to school as a girl. I don't see any hope for the near future though. Barb and I already have our uniforms for school so it looks like I'll have to be Missy a little while longer. In a way though that's okay since I think I'd really miss my new friends. I don't think they'd let me hang out with them anymore as Kevin. The first day of school came much too quickly, I couldn't believe summer was over, it had gone far too quickly. I got up the first day and plugged my curlers in before going to take a shower. Mom had added one more item to my daily beauty routine over the summer. I now had to shave my legs and underarms several times a week. I stepped into the shower and while I was letting the creme rinse work on my hair I lathered up my legs and underarms and ran my pink razor across them. At first it seemed goofy for me to be shaving my legs when I had no need to shave my face but mom insisted on it to make sure I looked nice in a dress or shorts. I could have probably skipped shaving today since I had just shaved two days ago but I wanted to look nice for my first day. After finishing with shaving and doing my hair I dried myself off and pulled on a pair of white nylon panties and my robe. I went back to my room, set my hair and started to put on my uniform. My new school is a private one and both the girls and guys have to wear uniforms. The guys wear gray slacks, a white shirt, burgundy jacket, and a gray and burgundy striped tie. The girls' uniform is a gray pleated skirt, a white blouse, burgundy jacket, and a gray and burgundy tie that gets tied in a floppy bow. I'm in junior high so I have to wear white or burgundy knee socks with my uniform while Barb who is in the first year of high school is allowed to wear either knee socks or stockings. Sometimes I find myself thinking of all the trouble I have to go through shaving my legs I find myself wishing I could wear stockings too. An odd thing for a boy to think yet there are times when I can't seem to help it and that scares me. I take off my robe and put on a plain white bra, step into a white, half slip with about two inches of lace at the bottom then pull on my skirt. I finish buttoning my blouse then have to hold up my skirt to pull the ends of the blouse down to smooth out any wrinkles where I've tucked it onto my skirt. After I got all this done I put on my knee socks and took out my hair. It only takes a little work with a brush to make my hair look really nice and just to top it off I add a burgundy colored, silk scarf tied in a pretty bow. I know I'm a boy pretending to be a girl but I want to make sure no one else knows. I'm not allowed to wear makeup to school yet so that saves me a little time in getting ready. I slip into a pair of black penny loafers, put my blazer on and head down to breakfast. Mom and Barb are already at the table when I get there and seeing Barb in her uniform I realize that we look just like sisters. Of course Mom has already noticed this and is busy telling us how proud she is to have such nice looking daughters. I put a lot of effort into making myself look good this morning so I'm not about to argue. I just smile and thank her, it's easier that way. After we finish eating Mom asked Barb me to close our eyes until she says to open them again. I closed my eyes and heard mom leave the room and come back just a few seconds later. She told us to open our eyes and gave us each small gray purses with our initials on them. This will help keep you organized in school Missy, said mom. You can't carry everything in your blazer pockets and you don't have in pockets in your skirt. 
Sure I suppose I could have gotten mad and put up a fight screaming that I wasn't a girl and would never lower myself to carrying a purse but when I thought about it for a moment I realized mom was right. I was after all going to attend school as a girl and I would need to carry necessities such as a brush, mirror, tissues, all of which mom had thoughtfully put into my purse, along with things like pencils, pens, and other junk. There was no way to carry all that in my blazer and the purse was cute in a way with the initials Mar in a fancy style on the front. Thanks, mom. I cried as I hugged her tightly. This is perfect and so pretty too. I just love it. Are you sure? She asked, tears running down her cheeks. I wouldn't want you to feel silly carrying a purse. I'm just trying to help. I'm standing in front of my mother in a skirt, feeling my slip brush against my bare legs, my long curly hair brushing my neck. I was starting a new school year dressed as a girl from the skin out after spending my entire summer as a girl. I've worn nothing but girls' clothes, went to the local pool in a bikini and even made several new friends as Missy and Mom was worried that I'd feel silly carrying a purse. For the first time since becoming Melissa, I realized that she truly meant to help me. I loved her more than ever now. Mom and I hugged for a few more minutes then I gave her one last kiss and gathered my school stuff together. It was only a few blocks to school so Barb and I slung our new purses over our shoulders and started walking. We laughed and talked all the way to school which was something we'd never done before. I've been feeling really close to Barb lately, we spend a lot of time up in our rooms just talking to each other. It's surprising how much we didn't know about each other but we're making up for lost time and really getting to be friends. We had to split up at school since we'd be in different buildings but we promised to have lunch together. I said goodbye and went into the junior high building to start my first day of school as a girl. I found my classroom and took a seat in the front of the room. I used to always sit as far back as possible but I figured that since today was sort of a new start for me I'd do things differently. I hung my purse over the back of my seat like the other girls did, smoothed out my skirt, sat down and started rummaging through my purse for a pen. A few minutes later I noticed a girl and boy walk in and take seats on either side of me. I was too busy looking through my purse to pay any attention until I heard a familiar voice say hi. Looking up I saw Tim sitting next to me with a grin on his face. Do you come here often? He asked, his grin getting wider. You can't pick up girls at school you twit, said another familiar voice from the other side of me. I turned to see Jill sitting there smiling at me. Hi guys. I didn't know we'd be going to the same school. I said surprised to see my friends from the pool. You can't get rid of me that easy, said Tim. You'll just have to marry me. Sorry Tim, I replied with a warm smile but I'm not allowed to get married for a little while yet. Excuse my brother Missy, laughed Jill. I thought he was going to break his neck getting in here when he saw you. I had to hurry, Tim replied. I didn't want some other guy sitting next to my fiancé. I thought I told you I'm not allowed to get married yet, Tim. That's okay, he said with his grin nearly touching his ears. I'll wait. I looked at Tim and smiled. He had light red hair, blue eyes that seemed to light up when he smiled, and seemed like the kind of guy my girlfriends had described as being dreamy. He was a couple of inches taller than me and probably a few pounds heavier. I wondered why he was so interested in me when there were real girls to be interested in. I liked the attention but also found it scary. Not just because another boy thought I was cute but more because I thought he was. I didn't have time to give it much thought because the teacher walked in a few seconds later and began class. I'd worry about boys later, right now I wanted to concentrate on class for a change. Jill wanted me to eat lunch with her and Tim was begging me to eat lunch with him but I wanted to be with Barb today, we were becoming sisters and best friends. The rest of the day went so well I could hardly believe I was really in school. I had always hated school and my grades proved it. I often fell asleep in class, rarely did homework, and my old teachers are probably jumping for joy that the smart mouth kid in the back didn't return this year. Today though I seemed to want to pay attention, I listened carefully to what my teachers were saying and even took notes. Barb was amazed when I told her and even insisted on seeing my notebook before she believed me. She teased me about being a teacher's pet but I just laughed it off, I was enjoying school and I didn't care what she said. 
Barb and I walked home together after school and even did our homework together when we got home which shocked mom to no end. Mom thought it was great that we were finally getting along but she wasn't prepared for the shock of me doing homework. After I finished my homework I went to my room to get out of my uniform, I was in a hurry to see Jill and my other girlfriends. I felt like getting dressed a little more than just jeans or shorts so I decided on a red and white dotted mini dress with matching panties. The dress was shorter than my usual ones but it was supposed to be that way so that the panties would peek out a little now and then. As I was getting changed I stopped and looked at myself in the mirror. I've always tried not to spend too much time looking in the mirror but tonight was different. I had taken off my skirt and blouse and now I just sort of stood looking at the girl with the long curly hair standing there in her slip and bra. I began turning from side to side, stopping occasionally to see what I looked like from a different angle. I wondered why I had avoided looking in the mirror much before, after all I was pretty good looking. I turned a few more times, admiring the cute girl a little more than quickly pulled off my slip, put on a pair of pantyhose, slipped on my outfit and ran off to see my friends. We promised to get together after school to talk about our new classes and stuff and I wanted to get there as fast as I could. I had a ball laughing and talking about school with the other girls and took more than a fair share of teasing about Tim. Julie, one of my new friends, told me that if I didn't want him she'd be happy to take him but I said that I wasn't ready to give him up just yet. After all he asked me to marry him. Jill thought my outfit was really pretty and asked where I bought it so she could get one like it. She told me how nice I looked in it and how well it fit and I found myself enjoying the compliments. Stuff like that was happening a lot lately, I didn't feel stupid or silly when someone said I looked nice or complimented me on my outfit, it made me feel good. That was just one thing I had noticed that seemed to have changed about me, changes I wasn't sure how to handle but there wasn't time for that now, we had a lot of gossiping to do. Jill couldn't wait to tell us all about a cute boy in her fourth period class and how she was sure he was the cutest boy in the whole world. We argued a lot over that, each girl saying that the boy she was interested in was the cutest. When things got around to me I giggled and made the other girls swear they'd never tell a soul about the boy I liked. After they all swore that they'd rather be caught kissing the dorkiest boy in school I told them about my dream guy. I wouldn't say who he was but described his pretty blue eyes, his cute freckles, and hair that reminded me of a summer sunrise. The other girls had a tough time figuring out who I meant and Jill was the first to speak up. You're not serious, are you Missy? She giggled. Please tell me you're not serious. The other girls were totally confused and demanded that Jill spill her guts. Jill refused, saying that it was too weird to believe unless I said it myself. Okay if you insist. I laughed. His name is Tim. No please tell me you're teasing me. Jill begged. Please not my Tim. He's not yours. I teased, pouting. You can't have him. Believe me Missy, I wouldn't want him. He's just a dumb brother that I'm stuck with. I'll take him. I said laughing. Just think you'll be my sister-in-law. Jill put her arm around me and started to laugh. She offered to have her parents adopt me so we could be sisters, anything to save me from Tim. We laughed and talked until it was finally time to go home for dinner, promising to call each other later. Jill and I walked back home together giggling and carrying on as if we were crazy. It was wonderful. That night as I lay in the bathtub I started to think about some of the changes I'd noticed in myself. I've noticed that I take a little more time than before in picking out something to wear. I don't just reach in and grab anything I find, I take the time to make sure my top will look just right with the skirt or slacks I was planning to wear. I've also noticed that I enjoy picking out my clothes and spend a lot of time deciding whether I'll wear a dress or slacks with dresses winning more and more. I have no idea why but I kind of enjoy getting all done up to go out somewhere, it's gotten to be fun to see what I can do with my hair and I even like the way my legs feel when I'm wearing stockings. I wonder what's happening to me and sometimes think I should work harder to be a boy again but I'm just not sure. If I could get mom to let me be a boy again where would I go to school? How would Barb explain her sister's leaving and her brother's coming? I never had many friends as Kevin but Missy has loads of them. Barb never got along with her brother but loves her sister. 
Kevin wore jeans or shorts, Missy can wear a dress, a skirt, shorts, or slacks depending on her mood. Kevin grudgingly combed his hair and hated to get it cut. Missy gets to style it in all kinds of different ways, has tons of ribbons, bows and hair ornaments, and loves fixing her hair. Kevin slept in his undershorts or PJs if it was winter, Missy has a drawer with nothing but nightgowns in it. My nightgowns come in all different shapes and styles, I have long ones, short ones, skimpy little baby doll ones, blue ones, pink ones, yellow and white ones. I have heavy flannel ones for winter and light cotton ones for summer. I also have a bunch of nightgowns made of silky feeling nylon which I have to admit feels so nice to wear. It was all adding up to my acting more and more like a girl and enjoying it. I don't know when I started to like being Missy, it wasn't anything sudden, I just seemed to have become the sweet girl mom and Barb dreamed about and I dreaded. A few months ago I was pleading with mom to let me take off the dress she made me wear. Now I just love wearing a pretty dress and frilly underwear. Whenever I get dressed up to go somewhere everyone tells me how nice I look and that makes me feel great. It's like I said, I'm not sure what's happening to me or if mom will ever let be a boy again but I'm also not sure I care. This is fun. It's been a couple of months now since school started and today is my 13th birthday. Mom promised me that I could invite a couple of girls from school over after school for cake and ice cream and I can't wait for class to end. I wish I could have invited Tim but mom insisted on an all-girl party but promised to let me have a boy-girl party another time. I couldn't walk fast enough on the way home and Barb had to hurry to keep up with me. As I turned the corner and saw our house though I froze, there were two familiar cars in the driveway, one belonged to my mother's sister and the other to my dad's sister. Both used to be regular visitors to our old house but I hadn't heard from them since we moved. How was I going to explain that I was Melissa now? Barb held my hand and told me that she was sure everything would be fine as we walked into the house. I was shaking like a leaf, terrified that I'd be laughed at. After all the last time these people had seen me I was a nasty, rotten 12-year-old boy. Now they were about to meet Melissa, a pretty, well-mannered young lady. What would they say? As I walked into the room and set my books down I was horrified to see that dad's sister had brought her parents along and mom's mother was there too. I wanted to run and hide but before I could my grandfather called for me to come in and sit down. I summoned up the last bit of courage I had and with Barb at my side walked into the room to meet my family. I felt as if their stares were going to drill holes right through me as I said hello but everyone smiled and said how happy they were to see me again. My aunts and grandmothers were kissing me and telling me how pretty I looked but I was still worried about my grandfather. How would he take seeing me all done up as a girl? He had to figure that along with the curly hair and girls' school uniform went the right underwear and since I had already taken off my blazer he couldn't miss the straps of my bra. Finally the women finished up with me and grandma put her arm around my shoulder and turning me to her husband asked what he thought of me. I think you're a very pretty young lady Melissa. He beamed. I'm proud to have such good-looking granddaughters. You don't think I'm a sissy? I asked, dreading the coming reply. Grandpa put his arms around me, hugged me, then gave me a kiss on the cheek. Are you happy? He asked calmly. Yes, I am. I said as calmly as I could. I don't think I should be but I really am. You're a lovely young lady Melissa, your mom tells me you have a lot of friends and you and your sister are as close as any sisters could be. Why shouldn't you be happy? But I'm a boy. I shouldn't be dressed like this and I shouldn't like it. You were a rotten boy that even I didn't like Missy. He said reassuringly. Now I understand you're the sweetest girl anyone could hope for. Enjoy your new life sweetheart, a pretty young thing like you should be happy. I was so happy that I started to cry. Grandpa dried my tears with his hanky and kissed me again. Looks like everything worked like you said it would. He said to his daughter. She's become quite a girl. Mom looked at Grandpa with a you just let the cat out of the bag expression on her face. What worked Mom? I asked smelling a rat. What's he talking about? By now everyone was looking at my grandfather with the same expression as Mom had. Finally my dad's sister asked me to sit down and she'd explain everything. First she started to ask how I felt about wearing girls stuff and pretending to be a girl. 
She nodded her head understandingly when I told her how I used to hate it but had gradually come to enjoy it. Next she asked if I had noticed anything odd physically. I had to think for a moment but then I realized I wasn't getting any taller and my voice wasn't cracking like the boys at school. Instead it seemed to have lowered just a little bit and become smoother. The last question she asked was if there were any cute boys at school. I blushed for a moment when I thought of Tim and noticed everyone in the room nodding their heads in understanding. My aunt explained that mom had talked to all of them many times about how bad I was and how nothing seemed to work to settle me down. Everyone had been afraid that if something wasn't done to make me shape up I'd end up in jail before I was 18. Mom's hitting the lottery allowed them to go ahead with the idea my grandmother had brought up turning me into a girl. Dad's sister was a doctor and when they talked to her she checked and found that men who for some reason or another stopped making male hormones seemed to become less aggressive. Of course the side effect was that they also started to look like women. Since I hadn't hit puberty yet if I were to be given female hormones my body would start to develop like a teenage girl's. My mom's mother then suggested that since my body would look that way anyhow perhaps it would be best if I was to be dressed and made to live completely as a girl. Mom agreed saying that she was afraid people would tease me if I looked like a girl but dressed like a boy. I'd be called a sissy and picked on by other boys and she didn't want that to happen to me. All she wanted was to keep me from getting into any more trouble. They helped mom find a new house and move so that I could start over as Melissa with no one wondering whatever happened to Kevin. A lawyer friend of my grandfather was able to get my birth certificate changed to show that I was a female named Melissa and Roth, and then got my school records changed. Another friend had sent their son to the school I was now attending so after talking to the administrators I was allowed to attend as long as I stayed as Melissa and told no one about it. The pills I took for hay fever were estrogen tablets prescribed by my aunt in a dosage small enough to cause gradual changing to being female. When I started puberty a month later things really took off. My brain told my body that I was a girl so instead of my voice cracking and becoming deeper it just shifted and became smoother like a woman's. From now on I was told any weight I gained would end up settling into my hips and butt and the breasts I would soon grow would finish giving me the figure of a teenage girl. By the time I was Barb's age I'd have a definite need for a bra and would probably look just like she does now. Everyone just stood there staring at me and wondering how I'd react. There was a loud sigh of relief when I smiled and thanked them for everything they did for me. I was happier now than I'd ever been before and it was all because they had cared enough to take drastic steps to help me. I took my grandmothers by the hand and offered to take them for a tour of my bedroom. I couldn't wait to show them all of my pretty clothes and dresser dolls. I offered to take grandpa with us but he said that he never cared much for dolls. Too bad, he can't imagine what he's missing. Mom said that there's a special dinner coming up at the hospital where she does volunteer work and she wants Barb and me to wear the matching gowns we bought. I'm so excited about finally getting a chance to wear my beautiful new gown but I'm even more excited over the idea of how I'll look next summer in my bikini. Wait till Tim sees me then.